Welcome to Inside Out Boys with your host, Cody Bass. Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. Big hello to all you new subscribers. Um, well, I uh, want to show you, in that last video, we took apart the lower unit on a cutie little 15 Evan Rude, which is now a Johnny Rude. Um, because the lower was off of Johnson. And uh, after I did that and got it all back together, I had a couple uh, people request that I pull it apart, uh, show them how to pull it apart and everything. So we're going to get to doing that. And I'll show you my little homemade setup that they call OMC Special Tool 03 blah blah blah. <laughs> there ain't much to this special tool. So uh, I'll show you that and how they come apart and we'll look inside that puppy. And then uh, I wanted to share with you I had some success because of you guys. And I appreciate it. But I still need a little help. I show you. I show you. Look what we did. Okay, there's the little trigger everybody was talking. It's just a little latch. Ow. That's the trigger. So, I don't know. I don't, I doubt it probably originally came with a screw in there but seems to work just fine um, and then it snaps into a hole on the other side okay so where I need to help I get it that this is where gas leaves the tank to the motor and then there's another nipple right here that says air right on it so I'm guessing the pulse from the pistons and the cylinder would send pressure and air into this tank, which has the big old rubber. And it's still quite pliable, actually. And then this whole thing comes down and clicks in and seals it. What is this? What, what is that? I thought it was a vent or something, but um, it looks a little bent. Hopefully you can get a good look at it. I don't know what that is. This right here. I, I thought it was going to be a like a... Like a, maybe it turns the fuel off and on to this. But if anybody could help me with what this is, because I don't know. And uh, there's also a little little bitty hole right there. I don't exactly know what that does but this does have liquid inside it but we got success you can see probably it's all greasy and stuff where I've been shooting a PB blaster and whatnot in there but we had six we got success I'm a winner I'm a winner oh. so we got that Little baby steps. I knew it would take some lubrication and a little bit of working and everything. The skeeters are bad today. But I knew we'd get it. So, uh, what else do we got going in this video? So, we're going to take this lower unit and dissect it a little bit. Um, I washed up the little cutie. I'll show you. i show you. Got her all washed up, looking pretty, and did a couple other little things to it. But this one's ready to go for sale on the for sale rack. I've been doing a little bit of moving around on uh, outboards, getting my four sail rack kind of up and ready. And uh, I don't think I'll get to it in this vid, but I got some parting out to do. So we're going to have to get that done. Um, it breaks my heart. I have to take these perfectly good outboard motors to the scrap heap. It breaks my hearts. But 
I can't save them all. So if I can't keep the whole things and put it back in service because it's too bad, I can at least save them pots. So don't know what all we'll do in this video, but we're going to head in that direction. But as you always know, with this little shop here, you don't never know what's going to show up here. Let's get at it. So, had a couple people wanting me to uh, pull this dead lower unit off that nine, or excuse me, 15 horsepower, which is now a Johnny Rood. Um, OMC says you need special tool 03A, blah, blah, BB, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so. We're gonna make that tool, at least I did. And it's really nothing to it. Um, quarter 20, six inch bolts, chop the heads off, or just get you some of that uh, all thread, make them about six, eight inches long, like that. And then you put, you're gonna need a nut and a washer for each one and that ain't too much of a special tool now is it but here's the part that you're gonna you're, you're gonna you gotta get, build just get you a piece of flat stock I didn't have any thick flat stock so I just took two eighth inch pieces I think it was and welded them together it also makes it easier to drill the holes if you do two pieces and then weld them together. But anyway, you got to drill these holes. Okay. And I've got extra holes for a, another motor, but it's the two inner holes that you got to drill. And you're just going to use this as a template kind of deal. But I, I'll show you what you got to do is take out these two 3 8 inch bolts that hold the bearing carrier group inside. All right, you take out those two bolts, then you take your all thread bolts or whatever you want to call them and you screw it in there. I'll show you it here in just a second. Hand tight's generally good enough 
but if you're, you know, you can always take a set of vice grips and come down here by the bottom where it screws in and just put you a few turns. Three or four turns should be enough. Now, if these things are really salty, they can be hard coming apart. Um, I made a set of beefier bolts for mine. And the way I did that was basically I just put a copper, uh, I mean, excuse me, a plumbing nipple over the bolt like that. And then I put a couple tack welds. So it, now it, it won't bend. Um, the, if they're really salty, you can actually bend these little quarter 20s. They'll buckle a little bit. So I built those heavy duty ones. But I'm doing this so you can see, you can get all this stuff right at the local hardware. So I'm just screwing those in. I'll show you here. Like so. And then there's your nut and your washer. Then you're going to put this contraption over it. And then what you want to do is adjust your nuts so that you've got some room to get your prop shaft nut on the end of the prop shaft. Okay. Now, let me see if I can get you in here. Come over here. Yeah, I think that'll work better. Let me get you in there. Okay, it's going to shake a little. Right about there. All right, and then when you tighten your prop nut, it's going to push down that way, pulling everything out towards you. So watch this crack right here, that seam right there. Right here, watch that. There you go. See, this one's coming out nice and easy. Now, your nut, your prop nut's going to bottom out on this. You only get a little bit of pull. So then you loosen it back up. Pull this towards you. And then re-tighten the nuts up under it. Yeah, you only get that little quarter inch of pull each time. Now watch it here again. Okay, we're tight again. From here, I could probably whack it out with a hammer, but I'm just doing this for demonstrations. Again, pull towards you. Oh, look at there, it came right out. Okay, like I said, that one wasn't bad at all, especially being all dry like it was. Okay, now we can take out these. I can really almost see where the failure on this thing was. It was right here. He got line, somebody got line in the uh, prop, behind the prop, I'll show you. take off our special tool. So again, well, the prop the prop nut comes with it with the the outboard. <laughs> so you don't need you don't have to buy that. But or make it. But there's what you're going to make. So you can see the whole package. There it is. Is that in there? Nope. Where'd it go? Sorry. There's your whole package. That's what you're gonna need to to make right there. Yeah. 
so pause it as necessary or whatnot. All right, so let's look inside this thing. See what we get. See what we get. Yep. Oh wow, yummy. Ooh. Can you see inside there, boys and girls? Oh boy. Let me get a rag. I went and got one of my diapers. See what we get. There's the clutch dog. There's your failure. See it right here? There, there's your, that bearing, that back bearing and seal failed. Water got in. That's most probably done by just regular fishing line. Ooh, look at that, isn't that yummy? <laughs> And I can see the little cradle in there is Now when you go to put this thing back together There's another tool you need for these nine nine The inside of the the gear uh, one of them's a little ding, but they're not too bad. But just a second, I'll see if I can find that other little tool. I'll be right back. Here's the other special tool that you need to put this thing back together. Mine's a little bent from jerking it in there and so forth. But this feeds down through the shift rod hole and then comes up and you screw it into the back of the yoke cradle deal. This one's, you know, filthy and stuff, but that's how you do it. You, you feed it down through when you're putting this all back together, screw this into the back of the, uh, on the back of that yoke cradle is, a threaded part and you you're gonna bring it up through screw the cradle on that and then pull it back up under and around it, and it is difficult um, I'm not I don't plan on rebuilding this lower because um, the the bottom of the skeg has been filed and it's broke so I it's just not worth it I have much better ones but people asked me to take it apart and we can did that for sure um, it's it's not in the <laughs> Yeah. Yummy. So, there's your special tools you do need to either. And you can make this. You can go to um, Leroy's Ramblings on the internet. Just type that in on Google and then go to the 9915s. 
and if I'm, I'm going by memory, but I, I think he shows you how to make this, this contraption. Um, but if I remember, this wasn't too expensive anyway. You can go to um, boats.net, iBoats, whatever, and, and they have this, and it's normally in stock. So, but now this special tool, you definitely want to make, so. But you'll need that, those two, to, to get this apart and uh, get it back together if you're gonna redo a, one of these lowers. So I hope that helps. How's that one look? But see, now you can see how if you feed that little wire that's threaded up under there and then you screw it into that and then pull it back around and up and under the forward gear, which would be right there where my thumb is. And then this hooks to the clutch dog and would be and then eventually, once you get it to this point, this is where your shift rod screws in. So. What else, what else we find? Oh, look, there's a forward gear. But the pinion gear still don't want to come out. Was that a barnacle? <laughs> Yummy. There's your forward bearing way up there and the pinion gear. That's... I think I'm gonna try just a big old blob of grease and see if that'll hold them together. A little bit of geese. See if that'll stick those two together. So I can get in there, see? You with me in there? You with me? Hey! Now let's spin it around. There's your bearing. Uh, I didn't expect it to come out that easy, really, but there's your forward bearing. Let's take this off. There's also gonna be a little nylon prop spacer that goes behind the nut. Okay, so you got your propeller. Then you'll have a nut. Then you'll have a little uh, nylon splined spacer behind this nut. I don't have it here with me now. Then you'll have your prop shaft and then your prop washer that goes up against the bearing carrier. If I can get the thing back up. There, that guy. And that goes behind the propeller. All right, here's your bearing carrier and all. And that's what the failure was on this one, I'll show you. But you've got a nice big O-ring here. All right, so now here's your clutch cradle yoke and all that stuff. And as you shift it, I gotta put that around there. As you shift it, up and down, this will move the clutch dog back and forth into the gear lugs on the inside of these gears. Okay, so here's your reverse gear, so that would be reverse. Then you'd come into neutral, then you'd come all the way into forward. All right, so here's where your shift rod would go. Right down in that hole, and threads in there.
you get the idea. Here's your shift rod. So as you shift it, it's going to do that. Now, there's a hole through this prop shaft where these splines are, and there's two ball bearings and a spring. I saw the spring is still in there, but the two ball bearings were all crushed and everything in that mess of stuff I threw away. That's where the ball bearings were, what was left of them. And that's your whole system, so you can pause it, look at it, whatever you want to do, that's your system. Oh yeah, the pinion gear. It comes down, of course this is hooked to the drive shaft of the motor, and that's always spinning. Every time you start that motor, in neutral or forward or whatever, it's always spinning, of course, if the motor's running. And so when you're in neutral, it doesn't lock in these lugs. When you're in neutral, the inner lugs in here are not contacting anything from the pinion gear. So the pinion gear is just spinning. And then when it goes in gear, either way, these gears, the clutch dog slides on, you know, on to the lugs inside the gears in there. And of course now everything's spinning together. So that's how it goes in and out of gear. Forward, reverse, forward, reverse. And throw it in on the ground, eh? So there's the whole deal. Hope it helps. This is our next victim in. Uh, we'll be getting to this in the next video. It's a little Mercury 99. The fella brought it in, says it won't start. It's his backup kicker that he uses. He's got a bigger, big giant outboard for his main. This is his get him home in a pitch. Slant bar trolling motor, I guess. And he said he couldn't get it started. And he thinks it has spark issues. So, we'll get to doing a fact check on it and tear into this little cutie. It's a little baby cutie. Did I mention? It's a cutie. We'll get into this one next. So, that's the next video coming up. You want to work on a Manus rototiller? I don't. Bills. Rototiller. No, I don't like working on rototillers. It's not fun working on rototillers. I have thought about putting a propeller on them though.
So, there's the little cutie avenue. Oh, pardon me. That would be a Johnny Rude now. Ain't no Evan Rude, it's a Johnny Rude. I washed her up a little bit, cleaned her off, and did some more lubing on it. Ain't she a cutie? Did you notice? It's just a beautiful sunny day out here. Supposed to get up into the 70s. That's hot for my neck of the woods. Um, so, a little bit of a hodgepodge of outboard fun here. And uh, we've got our next victim all lined up. I don't know if I ever did show you guys. I can't remember, but I'm going to show you now. I show you all. the failure on this little 15 Evan Rood. Let me get the shift rod out in there. Um, take that. Off. There's part of the the inner seal or the seal, the outer seal here. That failed, and if you look, hopefully you can see it, and it's just all rust and tore up, so the seal is completely gone. And uh, you can actually see the bearings and stuff, so it, the, the seal's just deteriorated and destroyed. Probably fishing line got in there and chewed it all up. And then the water got in the S. Then they went fishing. They came home. Most likely that was the last fishing trip of the season. And that's where it sat on the back of a boat, outside. I still don't explain all the dirt and everything in there to me. I, I don't know. Makes you scratch your nugget once in a while, you know what I mean? But, but you saw what come out of there, so. But, uh. This video right here is starting to get a little long. It's a beautiful day and I got a lot of work to do. So we're going to get over there and um, start on this little cutie mercury. Get it. See if we can find out. We'll start with a fax check and see what we find and go from there. And so that's going to be a wrap on this one. And as always, that is one more hack from Kodiak. Thanks for watching. More vids are coming on Inside Outboards with your host, Cody Bass.